Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is March 22nd, 2019, and this is our weekly look, ba look back at last week's uh, eBay auction results, see how things did. We'll take a look at a few things coming up next week. Um, it was a sort of a quiet week on eBay, but there were a lot of things. But no huge ticket items this week, uh, but some very strong prices in a couple of surprising areas. We'll take a look at them. And uh, this week we've been following along the uh, auctions in New York uh, pretty closely and trying to pay attention to how things are doing and, and, and where it's all ending up. And one of the things we noticed uh, was that uh, last week um, uh, we noticed in the um, catalog that was done for the Irving collection, there was a, a big archaistic uh, pale green and russet jade uh, titled as Hong Shan Style. Okay, Hong Shan jades are extremely rare, hard to, hard to authenticate. And this one was estimated at five to seven thousand dollars. All right, and how did it do? Well, um, you got to pay attention to this. So now, as the yeah, and that's how it went. And everybody it was pretty shocked, um, but uh, some people uh, had a lot of confidence in that jade. Um, the provenance, of course, didn't hurt it and uh, did very well. Some other things did awfully well, and we'll get through them all. Some things also didn't sell, and we'll get into those. One of the things that did very well was that wonderful uh, white jade uh, brush pot uh, that we looked at, Chin Long to Jing period, uh, beautifully done, estimated at 800000 to $1.2 million, ended up selling for a little over $2 million, $2 million did fabulously well, wonderful object. And then, of course, you had these, the uh, Chin Lung uh, uh, Sutras, uh, that were of, of the Sutras of Perfect Enlightenment in their boxes. Um, you know, how great is that? I, I thought uh, last week, I think I might have mentioned that I thought the estimate seemed quite reasonable, three to 500,000. Well, the audience thought they were reasonable, and they ended up selling for five times their high estimate at $2.6 million. Uh, but, but wonderful objects, and, and, you know, it's sort of one of those, like they say, well-deserved prices. Because uh, you these don't turn up very often, um, as they'll as anybody will tell you. So, bravo! And uh, overall, the sales have been fine. Uh, there's still plenty of money in the market, still plenty of interest, but selectivity continues. Things that have been on the market in the last few years tended not to do so well. Things that have been um, um, in auctions in the last few years tended not to do so well, and um, or not sell at all. But that's that's the auction game. That's the way it goes. So. But we'll, we'll do the autopsy uh, next week and compile all this data and get into it. All right. And uh, back to eBay um, uh, in our world, uh, see how things went. Uh, there was this. This was a, a very nice uh, blue and white bowl, 18th century bowl, nicely done. I love the way it was drawn, a good shading of the cobalt and all that business. And um, Kung Shi period with a Chen Wa mark. And it brought $598, but a perfectly respectable bowl. Very nice. Ancient Legends had this. He's a seller over in Amsterdam that we track. Uh, many of you have seen his things before. He gets good things. He has a good eye. All right. And then on to this, the Nanoya Straits uh, uh, shaped rim dish with the phoenix in the center. I like this. I thought this was a very nice one. And uh, we came across it, I think, when it was about, at about five bucks or something. But uh, we all knew where it would end up. And uh, it went a little beyond that, even. It brought $3,725. But we've seen this color palette in this age dish do this before um, and get up into the three, four $4,000 range. So not totally surprised. But uh, the, the market for Nanoya Straits pieces continues to grow and uh, stronger all the time. Also, I wanted to mention <clears throat> the Irving Collection and other sales in New York that had Japanese things in them that la this week have done pretty well. The Japanese market does seem, for the really great pieces, is, is getting a stronger and stronger interest yet again, which I think is good for the market. I, th I, think, I think it's nice to broaden it. Uh, Japanese uh, things, have, uh, as superb as they are, have sort of been languishing in the sidelines. Collectors have had a heyday, a field day for the last 15 years, and prices now seem to be coming back in. All right. But anyway, there was this, this nice Shibayama and Ivory and uh, Mother of Pearl piece. Uh, there was one that we had on here a couple of weeks ago that did pretty well. And this one did pretty well. It brought $4,150. The one that sold, I think, two or three weeks ago brought about the same. The prices were about the same uh, within a couple hundred bucks anyway. So that's a good sign. Very healthy. And then on to this. This was, this was nothing extraordinary, but it was a perfectly nice, uh, probably mid-19th century, maybe a little before 
uh, Mandarin uh, uh, figural scene in the round, going around here with uh, women and, and, and uh, 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 officials and so forth. Eight inches in diameter. And, but look at the price it did, got. It did quite well. It brought $610. So it looks like, you know, export porcelain, uh, especially Mandarin export porcelain, continues to have uh, good interest. This was a nice one. It had a good looking foot on it. That's the. Uh, the bottom of one of these, in case you're not that familiar with it, sort of rounded, a little bit colored like oatmeal, um, and so forth. But be careful uh, because they are starting to fake these, you know, like everything else. And then on to this, that this cup of this pourer, uh, Kung Shi. The seller had it up as Kung Shi, had a nice crackle in it. I like the uh, facial expression on the on the beast creating the handle and so forth. Here was the uh, bottom of it, right here, and here's the interior with a clear glaze on the bottom, but very nicely done. And this is a quite unusual form. And I think that had something to do with the price. It ended up bringing $1,958, Tofi. Uh, seller over in Paris who has a good eye, they get on here with Asian things periodically. And uh, they take good photographs too, it makes it easy. That was a nice thing. And then our friend Josh up in New Hampshire, he ran another sale. Um, um, he had a big sale that ended a couple of weeks ago, and he still had some things, so he put he put up a, another 100, 100, 100 or so lots uh, last week. And this closed uh, beginning of this week. There was this nice, I thought this was lovely, uh, nice Ming bronze figure of an immortal standing on this oversized plinth. Loved the plinth. Loved that big stand that he was on. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, all grungy. This is a good old one. Nice original surface on it. There it is, okay, and it did just fine. It ended up bringing $1,450. Nice looking bronze, um, and there's some other bronzes coming up too this week, and you'll, we'll, we'll get into them quickly at the end. Uh, there was this, the uh, carved the, the young boy in his, in his robe carrying a couple of cups, um, uh, uh, snuff bottle. Good little snuff bottle, interesting form, unusual. Not superbly well carved, nicely carved, but unusual form, and unusual forms are always fun to look at, all right? And it brought $345, so I guess a lot of people sort of liked it. Uh, interesting object. And then on to this was that uh, late 18th century uh, uh, Mandarin court uh, uh, terrace scene with the man and the woman, but nice detail, uh, beautifully done, um, very, that, that, that very geometric, you know, straight line uh, sort of architectural carving with figures that they did in the Qing Dynasty. I like the green rocks and all the pebbles outlined in black and some good looking script on here. And I'm sure somebody uh, um, broke that script down and figured out what it said. I'm sure it's a poem, uh, either about love or spring or something. But uh, anyway, it sold for $1,713, which was a good price. Not a crazy price at all for that. It was aesthetically very appealing painting, very appealing. And then on to this, the, uh, the, this, the carved soapstone brush box. All right, this was a 19th century box, but it was awfully well carved. It was very well carved. All right, here's the end panels with the circles and then the fan-shaped uh, openings. And then there's a rectangular opening on the end with parrots and uh, another parrot on the other end. Here's the bottom of it, some decent legitimate age and wear to it. There it is. This was a good box, all right? And it ended up selling for $406, which I think was very reasonable. If you, if you collect scholar's objects and table objects, this was a nice buy. It was a good buy. And uh, on to our, our fellow here, the immortal, um, with, with the toothpick with a stick in his ear, cleaning out his ear. And uh, this was a good carving, had good color, and I like the burl, the burl root stand that they uh, put it on. Nice old piece of wood that they popped him onto after it was carved. Uh, beautifully done, nice details, good, well done fingers, and I like this facial expression. Very exaggerated, very, very curvy and, you know, uh, 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 demonstrable, I guess is the word. And it did fine. It brought $852, but it, but it was a nice one. And uh, he's one of the one of the known uh, uh, Liu Hans. He always is, he's got a pick in his ear. And I forget what he was digging out of there, but at any rate. Um, then there was th this. This was one of the bargains of the week. This was a nice little incense burner of a scholar riding on his ox. Uh, here it is. It's little splashes of gilt. But nice looking little bronze, nice patina on it, good surface. Our friend Tony, Scrap Dixon, over in France had this. It went for just $215. This thing was about six or seven inches. Uh, nice size objects in, in, in two parts. And I think this was a very, very good buy. I think somebody did just great with this. That was a, a nice thing to buy. 
and then on to the Kung Shi, uh, little Kung Shi vase. This was a sweet little piece of Kung Shi porcelain. Uh, it had that nice waisted high rise foot, that ribbed melon form body, and then the attenuated neck that flared out, creating this little flange that received the lid. Uh, nicely done, nicely done. And uh, it did fine. It brought $628. It was about five or six inches tall. And I forget, I had a Ming mark on it. But a good looking example. Good piece. And then there was this, the, the Happy Buddha. Um, I love this Buddha, okay? It was a 19th century example that had, had some issues. Uh, it was missing his thumb and, and, and banged around. But I love the bag. And I love the way his robes are just spread out over the floor. And uh, he had a great facial expression. Um, he had a good face. That's a good face. Those big sweeping eyebrows and the long eyes. Look how long how they extended his eyes. And um, very happy looking. Just laughing. That's a good one. All right. And uh, it did fine. It brought $671 with damage. Okay. Without the damage, this probably would have brought twelve, fifteen hundred bucks. It was a nice one. Good looking one. All right. And uh, let's hop over to here. This was the uh, the uh, enamel uh, co uh, square vase, sort of a uh, sort of like a Kong, uh, with elephant iron red uh, elephant handles on the sides. Often these in this color palette have um, calligraphy and areas of script on them. This one didn't, okay. And I wasn't sure how it would do, but I thought it was a pretty good one. Uh, here's the foot rim on it, and it had been, I believe, drilled previously as a lamp. But regardless, without the script and drilled, it brought twenty three hundred and thirty three dollars. All right, so that shows there's good there's good strength on the market for these. Uh, typically, they're they're labeled up as Republican. Sometimes they're a little before that, but uh, they're all nice. And uh, on to the uh, silk dragon piece. This was an interesting one. It was a, a four clawed dragon, as I recall. Uh, nice quality silk, though. Very good quality. Well well sewn all the way around with good gilt thread. Lots of gilt thread in it. Um, and, and it appeared to be in good condition and framed and all set to hang on a wall. And uh, people seem to like it quite a bit. I had 42 bids and sold for $810. And this came out of a, a seller, Antique Treasure Hunters, up in Waterville, Maine. A lot of good Asian art up in Maine. Those of you that are in this area, uh, there's some good Asian art in Maine. Boy, the Rockefellers lived up there, and all these coastal wealthy families were up there. And they brought some good Chinese art into their big summer houses. And every once in a while, they get into the market in that, that part of the world and some good things. All right. And now on to this, the puzzle pot, the uh, peach form puzzle pot. Um, we always feature these because they come in so many different varieties. And I know there are people out there that collect them. Um, they come in Celadon with underglaze red. They come in underglaze blue. They come in Femi June. Uh, they come in Femi Vert. They come in every palette imaginable. Uh, most of them were made in the middle latter part of the 19th century. Some were made a little before. This was an interesting one. I liked the colors on it. It was almost like the color palette on the Noya Straits pieces even. And um, it did fine. It brought $830, which is sort of in the middle upper range of these. Some of them bring $550, $600, um, occasionally a little less than that. And other times they, they get right up there. All right. And last were these. These were the bamboo carving books. Uh, somebody emailed me and said, why are we putting featuring books? I said, why don't you see what these bring? Uh, this is a, a pretty rare set of bamboo books. Um, um, uh, it's a very complete uh, survey of Chinese bamboo, uh, well written, uh, nice quality photographs and all that business. Here it is, okay, and it was written by Lawrence Tam years ago. The Hong Kong Museum of Art published them. I have this book at home. I bought, I bought my copy a long time ago at an auction. They were in a box lot. I think I paid $40 for it. Uh, but there's a lot of material, and I forget what year these were published. Um, Let's see, 1978, long time, wow. All right, <laughs> dating myself. But anyway, they've gone up in value because they're out of print. And uh, Asian art books, this is, this is a classic case. They sold for $3,900. The set originally was 40 bucks, I believe. Um, and the reason Asian art books is, if, you, if you're interested in this topic, this is a little something you should know. They don't reprint Asian art reference books typically, other than Hobson and some of the Dover books. But generally speaking, they do one run, and that's it. They typically don't go back and do them again. They print three, four, five thousand copies. They sell them, and that's the end of it. And that's why you'll see books that are only maybe been in the market for ten or fifteen or twenty years. <clears throat> and, you know, the, you know, the survey of Chinese ceramics, that sort of thing. And suddenly they're you know five hundred, a thousand dollars, and they were only seventy-five bucks new. And that's why, because they're not going to be republished, and they have good information in them, 
And um, so, so when you see books come out, um, go after them if, if you think you're going to need them someday, even if it's not something you want today. All right. So just, just a, little, a little tip on books. And this was a classic case of it. All right. And then coming up next week on eBay, we, we, we've started to put some things up. Sometimes, by the way, you know, the, the uh, eBay Today page, we start around the middle of the week and we start some, putting some things in here that are also going to end up in the newsletter. So if you sort of want to get a jump on it, uh, the eBay Today page is updated every morning, usually before 8 o'clock, often by 7 o'clock. Um, but it's it's something that uh, sometimes gives uh, um, sort of a previews of what will be in the newsletter. Not all of them, but 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 a few pieces. All right, these these we came across this morning that were on there. They're a very unusual little pair of vases. These are, these will be on the newsletter this week. Um, at first glance, I, they're done like with the, like the Chinese export porcelain, the 18th century examples. Um, you know of the, of the garniture vases, um, very similar scene. I don't think these are 18th century. I think these are latter 19th century, but very unusual. These are highly unusual with porcelain attached bases. All right, here's the bottom of it, old label on there. Uh, to me, these were probably made around 1890 to 1920, but very interesting. They're up to $23. They close tomorrow, but if you like unusual vases, you might want to check these out. These will be in the newsletter. And uh, then you have this, the bronze, uh, that seller over in uh, Poland. He gets interesting things. Nice, he gets good bronzes. He knows, I think, quite a bit about him. I think he's a little optimistic on the dates once in a while, but that's okay. White Crow. Um, and uh, this is a nice one, the good-looking uh, Ming bottle vase, pear-shaped vase with the, with the mask, archaic mask on it and the little, little arrow vase handles on the sides. It's up to 16 bucks. closes on Sunday, and that'll go up, I suspect. And uh, this nice Japanese bronze holding up a gong, okay, is, is on there right now. This is Clay and Brush has this. He's a seller over in Italy that gets, he, has, he knows a lot. He knows what he's doing, and he finds good things in Italy and puts them up on eBay. This is a nice bronze, um, and you might want to check that out, okay. And then on to this, the uh, incense burner. Um, we came across this the other day on sort of an interesting later stand. I like this. Um, this is a good-looking thing. And uh, we'll see how that does. It's up to three hundred and twenty dollars. I suspect it'll go up another thousand or so. Roof Hayes has this over in Dorchester. And uh, what's the last thing we're going to look at? Is um, is this the fan? All right. This is a, a nice looking uh, fan, nineteenth century, uh, but but well done. Good good detail in a wooden frame. And one of the things I wanted to mention was a lot of people have, have been taking advantage of the uh, ID uh, uh, assistant thing that we set up a, a month or so ago and the uh, auction preview thing, and thank you all. Uh, we've seen some very interesting things. And there's a fellow, uh, a family down in Australia, uh, the Farrells, uh, the, their nicknames, are they call them the Farrells, okay? And he's sending some things, and I guess his kids watch the video each week, and he said if you could give a shout-out to the kids, I'd, I'd, they'd get a kick out of it. So this is hello to the Farrells family, and uh, thanks uh, for watching, and I hope you kids become collectors, okay? All right, the world needs collectors to come in behind the old collectors like me. So um, um, uh, get into it with your dad, all right? Tell your dad to take you to some auctions. Okay, and um, that's it for the week. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And uh, uh, give us a thumbs up here and uh, leave a comment. I love the comments people leave. Some, some of them are kind of hilarious. I had to remove one last week, though. It wasn't very funny. And I don't know why he left it. It was political. But at any rate, um, uh, Thanks so much, and have a great weekend, and I hope you find something out there this weekend that you love, and you buy it and take it home and have fun with it. Okay. Uh, see you all next time, and we'll get to the uh, post-auction uh, look at uh, Asia Week uh, as soon as the numbers get in. We have a chance to sort of figure out what went on and what didn't go on and how it all went. All righty. Thanks a lot. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.